My voltage doubler project finally comes to its conclusion, a practical use, turning an Arduino Uno into a proper omnipolarity voltmeter. Now I use the word practical with quotation marks around it because obviously, for real work, in the real world, you would just buy a voltmeter. But this is for fun and learning, like everything else on the channel. And like every other long project, I have learned a lot. So the basic premise is you have an Arduino Uno that operates from 0 to 5 volts, and its microcontroller has analog pins that can read 0 to 5 volts. So in that voltage range, it is a voltmeter, an analog voltmeter. But using voltage doublers and the voltage reverser, you can increase the voltage of the supply, you can create a negative rail, and then you can do manipulation of an incoming signal to be able to communicate that to the Arduino Uno. I'm not going to go over the individual sub-circuits in this. I've done videos on them all. I'm just going to show you how we put them together. So in order to work with a plus or minus 5 volt signal using my op amps that need headroom, because my op amp isn't going to get up to 5 volts output, we use a doubler. So this will take the 5 volts and put it up to about 9 volts. Now you might be saying that you have a rail-to-rail -rail op amp, and I would say you still want to increase and give it some headroom because an op amp going up to 5 volts, even if it's rail-to-rail, -rail, there's still going to be a little bit of error. Maybe it's going to get within 4.98 or 4.95 of the rail. It's still not going to be perfect. But if the rail is above 5 volts, it will be able to, you know, mostly perfectly reproduce a 5 volt signal. If you don't worry about exactly reproducing at 5 volts, then you can just use a rail-to-rail -rail op amp. But for me anyway, I think the headroom is a good idea. So then, put it into the reverser. So your 5 volts becomes plus and minus about 8 or 9, somewhere in there, which is plenty. I actually only need plus or minus 7. So very simply you do that, one doubler stage and one reverser stage, and now you have your rails. They're not going to put out a lot of power, but the op amps aren't going to draw a lot of power. Op amps are not hungry, even ones made on BJTs. So it's going to be more than enough. So now that you have the power, we have to deal with the signal. So the first thing is, is your signal greater than 5 volts in magnitude, plus or minus? Plus and minus is just the direction. We know which way you got the probes plugged in. What matters is if it's over 5 volts. So you could either shrink the voltage coming in with a voltage divider to put it within the plus minus 5 volt range, or you could shrink it at the end, right before you give it to the Arduino. That's the better option because anytime you shrink a signal, because you, you shrink the signal but you don't shrink the noise, there's something called the noise floor. So if you shrink the signal and then work with the signal, you're also working with the noise and you have a worse signal to noise ratio. Now if you're working with steady DC voltages, this mostly doesn't matter. An AC signal it would. So it's best to leave the signal as big as possible all the way to the end. But to do that, your op amps would have to handle that voltage range. You could definitely use the doublers and reverser to get the voltage because, again, the op amps won't draw a lot of current. So you can make it as big as you need. If you want to do a 30 volt signal, you can get up to 30 volts, it'll be fine. But you need to have, if you do plus and minus 30 volts, you'll need to have an op amp that can handle 60 volts differential. Mine can only handle 16. So I'm only demonstrating with a 5 volt signal just to make life easier, but if you can't handle the whole voltage range coming in, use voltage dividers. And you could even do a switch, like if you wanted to make something that could handle plus and minus 5 volts, plus and minus 10, plus and minus 20, then you could have the signal go into different voltage dividers and use a switch. Just like the multimeter has got the different ranges, you could have a switch to say, this is a 5 volt, 10 volt, 20 volt signal, and it would divide or not divide based on that. So let's assume the signal coming in is plus and minus 5 volts. So what are we going to do to this signal? So the signal in, 0 to 5 volts is readable by the Arduino, but it can't read negative voltage. So what we want to do is make a negative voltage positive and then tell the Arduino whether or not the voltage was negative or positive. So we're going to do two things with the signal. We'll take the signal and stick it through a precision rectifier. Because the negative and positive rails are away from negative and positive 5, we will be able to reproduce and read the signals just fine. Read and reproduce. So this will turn 0 to 5 volts into 0 to 5 volts, and 0 to negative 5 volts into 0 to 5 volts. So then you just put this 
straight into the analog pin of the Arduino and use its built-in ADC. Or, if you're using your own ADC, you can just plug it into your ADC, whatever voltage your ADC runs on. So then, we have a digital signal. We're going to give high or low. And I'm going to use the binary number thing. I'm going to say high means negative, low means positive. And zero is, you know, whichever, whichever it's close to. So for that is a simple comparator. We just compare it to ground. You'll get a high if it's greater than ground or a low if it's less than ground, which is opposite what we want. Because if you want a high when it's negative, you want to say, is ground greater than the signal? But right now, if your rail, if you double your rail and then reverse your rail, you're giving plus eight or minus eight-ish as your signals. And that's not going to be good into the digital pin of an Arduino. So one option I thought of is you could use a diode to block negative voltage with a pull-down resistor. And then you could have multiple diodes in series, and that would bring the voltage down so that the high was not too high, and then the low would just be the pull-down resistor. And that worked. That worked just fine. But it was using too many diodes. I was having six and seven diodes in series to bring it down. And also, you're going to have to change how many diodes if you change the magnitude of the voltage, because the diodes are going to drop the same no matter what. So I switched to a simple transistor. I used a BJT NPN inverter gate, just a NOT gate. So when the signal is high, the op amp is going to put out a high, which will turn on the NPN, and it's not going to matter. This will be this will be like 8 volts or whatever, and then this you're going to plug in 5. So it'll overvolt, but that's not going to hurt the transistor. It's just going to be extremely saturated. So that'll turn the NPN on and short ground into your digital pin. And if the signal is low, then the op amp is going to put out a negative voltage, which is going to turn off this NPN, and it's got a pull-up resistor to high. So negative ends up giving a high, and positive ends up giving a low. And it only takes two resistors and one transistor, and it'll work with any voltage, so you don't have to change it at all. So that's your circuit. You compare it with zero to see if it's positive or negative, and you tell that to the Arduino, and then you use a precision rectifier to make it always positive, and you use the built-in ADC. That's it. And like I said before, you can either, if you have a signal bigger than 5 volts, you can either use voltage dividers at the beginning to bring it down to the 5 volt range, or you can do all of this if you have the parts to handle that voltage. You can do all of this with the bigger signal, and then right at the end, not here, this is fine, but the precision rectifier, you would put a voltage divider on the output of the precision rectifier to make sure it's within the voltage range acceptable by the Arduino Uno, or whatever ADC you're using. Not commercially viable, but pretty neat. So let me show you. So I have here an Arduino Uno. It's plugged into the wall in a USB charger, and it's providing the power. My power supplies are off. So I've got the 5 volt power plugged in, and I've got a PWM pin providing the square wave. So the PWM pin goes into the push-pull power amplifier so that the pin is only driving a little bit, and most of the current is coming directly from the voltage regulator. This is probably not necessary because the pin can drive at least 10 milliamps, and I'm drawing less than one. So you can probably just plug the pin right in and it'll be fine. But I already had this plugged in the board, so I just substituted. So I push-pull amplify the square wave, then I put it through a voltage doubler, and then I do the trick where I increase the square wave. I did a video on that. So I take the 5 volt square wave and drive the transistors to put out the 9 volt square wave, which I put into the voltage reverser. So then I have my positive and negative rails, which I've got my oscilloscope measuring. So the zero line is about here in the middle, and the divisions are 5 volts. I can make it a little better. Okay, so the divisions are 3 volts, and here's zero. So we go 3, 6, and not quite to 9, and then 3, 6, and a little bit more. So it's probably about 8.5 and 7.5, somewhere in there, which is perfectly fine. So over here to the side where you can barely see, not that you'd see anything but a bunch of wires anyway, I've got one op amp chip, which is doing the comparison to generate the high or low with the transistor plugged in, and then the precision rectifier is next to it. The left multimeter is measuring the sign bit, if you will, and the right one is measuring the precision rectifier. My oscilloscope, I'm using a DC signal generator just to create a voltage. I didn't feel like plugging in a little potentiometer. 
Right now it's at about 2.2 millivolts positive, so the sine bit is low, it's positive, and it's below the resolution to measure. So if I increase the voltage of this signal, we'll eventually see it start to go up. So we're at 25 millivolts and we're reading 0.02 volts here. And as we go up and up and up, we can see that the sine bit stays low because it's still positive and it's reproducing the voltage. 920 millivolts, we go here, 2.8 volts, so the positive side is basically a no operation. It just, you know, puts the signal through. But if I make it negative, so you can see this is saying zero volts and this is reading. See it switched, now it's reading five volts to say it's negative. If I turn it up the tiniest bit, so right now it finally went to zero and I'm at 1.5 millivolts. So 0 0.001 volts was high enough for it to switch. So, you know, you know, this is not a precision instrument, but 0 0.001 volts is a pretty good resolution. But anyway, when it's negative, this is giving out five volts, and this is 270, negative 270 millivolts. If I keep going down, let's take it to about, say there, 1.8 volts, 3.5 volts, negative, of course. So you can see we're getting a positive voltage here on the negative side, but this bit is high. So you would read this bit to see the sign, read this bit, or this pin, to read the voltage, and there's your Arduino multimeter. If you were using a voltage divider to shrink a signal, then in software, all you do is multiply. So if you had a plus minus 10 volt signal, and you did a voltage divider to cut it in half, whatever this voltage is that you read in software, multiply by two. That's it. You lose resolution, but as long as you have enough resolution, there you go. And as you can see, the rails this whole time have been steady because they're drawing almost no power. The Arduino Uno input pins are gonna be way higher than this. These each, each of these has one mega ohm impedance. The pins are gonna be CMOS pins probably. I don't know how the analog pin works, but it's gonna be way higher than this. So the rails might be even slightly more stable. But you can see whatever noise, it's hard to see any noise because the, the line is so small, it's a small window. But whatever noise is here from the doublers, it's not affecting the accuracy enough to notice here. If I turn down the resolution, if I go to just 260 millivolts and turn this down, see that's 259, I can go even lower, 34 millivolts, 32.8. So now you can see the resolution is suffering a little bit, but it's not bad for a breadboard, is it? Now before I finish, there's one little issue. I am going to unplug the square wave and predictably everything goes down to zero. Then I'm gonna plug the square wave back in. You'll see it's messed up. It's giving garbage readings and these lines, these, these are the, the positive and negative through the doubler and reverser, are completely messed up. So you know how I have the push-pull that's taking the five volt square wave and bringing up the voltage. The NPN of that, the output NPN, if I unplug its collector, you'll notice the positive rail went up to where it should be. The negative rail is at zero because the reverser is not getting a signal. And if I plug it back in, now the negative rail is where it's supposed to be. This happens whether I turn off the Arduino or I unplug the square wave. So I'll unplug it. So the Arduino is unplugged and it dies even faster because there's no power at all. Plug it back in and when it boots up, it's messed up like this. But if I unplug and replug that NPN collector, it's fine and it stays fine no matter what I do. So I don't know what's going on here. It's not an issue with the BJTs becoming collector base saturated or anything. I've checked that. I've put pull up and pull down resistors on every part of this doggone circuit. What has to be happening is the voltage reverser is somehow getting mischarged. Like if I unplug this and replug it, then something is wrong and it's charged wrong. And if I look, like I moved the oscilloscope all the way over here at the beginning of the circuit. So this right here is the square wave. You see the yellow? Let me turn off the green. This yellow is the square wave being sent by the PWM pin. And if I measure the push-pull on that, it looks like this. It's got some weirdness. I don't know what it is. But if I unplug and replug the NPN collector on the output of the square wave increaser, we're back to normal and there's the boosted square wave. And here's the voltage boosted one. So you can see there's the nine volt square wave. I don't know. It doesn't matter if I unplug the PNP collector, it doesn't fix it. If I unplug the PNP power, it doesn't fix it. If I manually short or pull up or pull down the capacitors, it doesn't fix it. The only thing that fixes it is unplugging the collector of the NPN of the output of the push-pull 
that's converting 5 to 9 volt square wave. I have no idea what's going on. Hopefully one of you does, or hopefully I figure it out in the future, and I can tell you. For right now, the solution is you could on boot up, I mean, you're not really going to make this, but if you wanted to make this, then what you'd do is you'd have some sort of timer, just like a capacitor and a transistor, that cuts off that collector until the capacitor charges. And then once the capacitor charges, the collector's open, and it's open thereafter, which allows the collector of the NPN to flow into the output. That would work. It would just happen on boot up and, and be fine, and then when you turn the device off, it drains the capacitor, and so it'll do it again on boot up. I don't know. It's a mystery. The circuit absolutely works, except for that one little thing. And if you fix it, and you don't unplug it again, <laughs> then it works. I don't know. Like I said, doing projects is a whole lot of learning. So I'm obviously not going to use this as a multimeter. I have multimeters, and they're much easier to use. I'm just going to disassemble this and recycle the parts. But that's why I keep emphasizing it's for fun and learning. Even though I still have mysteries to uncover, I am better at electronics than I was a week ago just because of going through all of this. This was supposed to be like a three video series and it turned into what, seven? I don't remember. Because I kept having problems and had to solve them. So I'm still proud of what I made even if it was a total pain in the butt. And I hope you at least found it interesting even if you didn't find it useful. Or as a wise man once said, if they don't find you handsome, hopefully they at least find you handy. So with that, I'll be seeing you.